go a hundred year cycle and Lenin being a part of that. And basically what we have seen leading up to 2024, probably for the past 16 years or so, uh, when certain candidates are running for office. So if you could uh, sh share this, we would greatly appreciate it as we go forth. So let's start. We're going to get to the two dreams, but let's start with this because it's going to make a lot more sense. So Back when Barack Obama was running for office, so back when he was running, he talked about hope and change, right? So back when he started running and then his second term running, it was forward. I, th I think he, he was forward. And when Hillary ran, it was stronger together. And then Kamala now is running on uh something called she's saying the word joy a lot and she's saying uh we fight we win okay because when when you actually try to search what kamala's campaign slogan is all that comes up is that she's not using a nazi germany campaign slogan it's very strange so you can't even really get a handle on what hers is but i'm going to tell you something very interesting both stalin joseph stalin and lenin used hope and change in their slogans. Both of them used it. Now, another one used this campaign slogan too, okay? So Adolf Hitler used the joy and hope campaign slogan too. And one he loved to use was bringing back the joy, okay? So bringing the joy back, right? So... This was part of the platform of the Nazi party in Germany, right? So I'm going to read this to you to understand this more. So when the Nazis rise to power in 1933, the new regime immediately began trying to transform German society in a process known as Gleich, Gleichschaltung, basically is what it, how it's pronounced, um, which is German for coordination or synchronization. All political parties and trade unions were outlawed, except for the Nazi party and the Nazi German Labor Front. The German Labor Front created Strength Through Joy, a, a program called Strength Through Joy in November of 1933. So if you go back and you look at all these campaign slogans, and we could go back and examine much more, you have hope and change, right? Forward, stronger, together. So strength and joy, strength and hope. And then with Kamala, you have joy and we fight, we win. So they created this Strength Through Joy program in 1933. And it was designed to build support for the Nazi regime and increase worker productivity by improving the quality of life for so-called Aryan Germans, providing organized alternatives to free leisure time, Strength Through Joy programs filled workers evenings and weekends with classes, concerts, theater performances, art ex exhibitions, and sporting events. Now, what's interesting about all of those areas is that when you're looking at how they're trying to program people, what is it associated with? Concerts, right? We've seen this at Taylor Swift, uh, Swift concerts and others. Uh, theater performances, just look at Broadway and the messages that they weave throughout Broadway performances uh, to try to get uh, a woke ideology across. Art exhibitions, sporting events. Look at now the NFL, the MLB, everything with, with gay pride, you know, Black Lives Matter, all of this. So we think that this is like something new that they've been doing, but they've been doing this for a very, very long time. They even provided cheap vacation packages to German workers in 1934. So Germany had this program, Strength Through Joy. And this is what they promoted. And they promoted that through concerts, sporting events, theater, and art exhibitions. Okay? This, this is all stuff we're seeing now. This is back in 1933. So that's Germany. Now, 
we have two other people we mentioned. We have Stalin and we have Lenin. We're going to focus here on Lenin for a moment because it's been 100 years since Lenin's death in the Soviet Union. All right. So 100 years ago about Lenin dies. He actually dies January 1924. Okay. So Vladimir Lenin, he, they called him a Russian revolutionary politician and political theorist. He served as the first and founding head of government of Soviet Russia from 1917 until his death in 1924. So seven years and of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1924. And basically they became a one party socialist state governed by the communist party under Lenin. Okay. So it was, it was Marxist. Um, and his developments to the ideology was called Leninism. Okay. So I'm going to show you posters that Lenin put out because it's night, it's 2024. This is a hundred year cycle. This is a hundred year cycle for other reasons too, that we're going to get into in a few minutes, but I'm going to put out for you this first picture. This was a campaign that Lenin put out peace, bread, land. Now, I want you to think about this because we're in a hundred year cycle. They did a bait and switch. They did a leader swap. Kamal is now in. What is she touting? She's the one that can bring peace, right? She's the one bread that's going to control grocery prices. So you're not paying as much for groceries. She's going to give that to you and land. They're going to give people $25,000 to buy a home and they're going to secure the border. Peace, bread, land. She is speaking about these three things in a very similar manner that Lenin put this campaign forth in Russia at the time. Now, we'll show you as well how this connects to the Democrats in other ways and the underground Republicans joining them because they are. So what, so basically... The Democratic Party and Kamala Harris are saying that they can bring peace because Donald Trump has caused a tumult in the nation, right? This is what they're saying, right? They've talked about groceries. They'll price control, which causes bread lines, by the way. Every communist nation has tried to do it. It doesn't work. Uh, and basically, too, they're going to secure your land for you. They're the ones that are going to secure it, take it back fix the border crisis and make your land safe. So they are they are going down the same talking points that Lenin used in Russia. Also, we're going to show you the next picture. These are all things Lenin said. A lie told often enough becomes the truth. Propaganda. If the media says it often enough, it must be true. Operation Mockingbird. If it's said over and over again, it must be true. Now, that was Lenin. I'm going to show you something that Stalin said, because these ideologies that were part of Russia and Germany have found their way into the United States of America. We'll go back to Lenin in a minute, but I'm going to show you what Stalin said. When we hang the capitalists, they will sell us the rope we use. When we hang the capitalists, they will sell us the rope that we use. Education is a weapon whose effects depend on who holds it in his hands and at whom it is aimed. You ever wonder why they took the mountain of education? You ever wonder why there was a hostile takeover of the mountain of education in this nation? Because it is a weapon and they can indoctrinate, indoctrinate your children. These ideologies they are using came from communist, wicked, demonic dictators. This is where it came from. You have Lenin, you have Stalin, and you have Hitler. Education is a weapon whose effect depends on who holds it in his hands and at whom it is aimed. So if you ever wonder why they changed the entire education system, if you ever wonder why they're allowing all of these things into the education system, it's for this reason, because it is a weapon. It is a weapon. 
and they're using it as a weapon. They're using it as a weapon to destroy the younger generation, to put them in bondage to wokeism, to put them in bondage to agendas and to activist groups that really don't care about them because the younger generation is a means to their end and that's all they are. And so this is why there was a hostile takeover of the mountain of education in this nation because they did it in Russia and they did it in Germany. And I don't know if you know this, but in 1938, and this went to 1939, the Nazi party came over to this country and studied the Democrat party platform. So the Nazi party came over and took a look-see at the Democratic Party platform. Okay. And because the enemy, so what they did was they, they, they examined it. And then they decided to refabricate it and reimagine it. And they took the word joy, right? Strength through joy. Now, the word of God says the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Look at that. That's what the word of God says. What does the enemy do? It's taken and then mimicked as close as possible by the enemy to the word because Satan can't do what God can do. So he manufactures it. Strength through joy is the enemy refabricating the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, and the enemy cannot do what God can do. He cannot create something out of nothing. So he manufactures it out of something else. So he manufactures a fabricated corruptible joy that has chains waiting for those who choose to agree with such because it's not joy at all. Joy through strength, hope and change, the joy Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are touting. It's not joy at all because that kind of joy has chains waiting for those who choose to agree with it. It's not joy. It's a hatred and destruction that has a very thin shell of joy painted over it and made to look like it. And like a used car salesman, they display it as an excellent working condition when under the hood, nothing works right. This is what the enemy does. He displays something as great and wonderful and in excellent working condition. But if you look under the hood, everything is broke, busted, disgusted, and not working right. And this is what the enemy has done with joy. This is why, because the enemy can only work in cycles, you see this word joy reworking itself through the Democratic campaign, especially right now, because it's cycles and because this this strength through joy program of Nazi Germany and the fact that the dictators of Russia used hope and change, it's not a coincidence. It's because it's a cycle and the enemy has to work in cycles in order to accomplish what he desires to accomplish. And so this is what we see happening here. And it was December of 2023 when the Lord had said that the joy of the Lord, the justice of Yahweh had entered into the earth. Now, why would he say that at that point? Because this was coming, because they were going to try to take this word and use it in a way to steer people down a road of perdition. And he knew it. So he, December of 2023, said the joy of the Lord, the justice of Yahweh has entered the earth. You know why? Because it has to deal with a counterfeit joy that has actually been put out now. That is a recycling and refabricating of other nations that followed Marxist ideologies. Now, in 1924, two things happened. The Olympics happened in Paris, France, and Lenin dies. So you have a dictator that dies, and you have the Olympics happening in Paris, France in 1924. 100-year cycle, 2024, Olympics happened in Paris, France, right? And something similar will happen like what we saw happen with Lenin. Something along that line. Because this is a hundred year cycle, we should be looking for that. We should be looking for something in that sense to happen. Now, this ties to Jonah and this ties to Nahum. 
And we are going to, we're going to get into that in a moment here because I want to just mention this before we get into this. Something very interesting also. The Nazis admired the Jim Crow era laws that encouraged segregation. And they debated whether to introduce that segregation into Germany, but they decided that wouldn't go far enough. So they decided to go a step further than that. And this is what is said about it. One of the most striking Nazi views was that Jim Crow was a suitable racist program in the United States because American blacks were already oppressed and poor. This is what they're saying about this. But then in Germany, by contrast, the Jews were rich and powerful. It was necessary to take more severe measures. This is how these people think. So they came and they studied this, the Nazis, the Democratic Party, the Jim Crow laws, what the U.S. did to Native Americans. They studied this. And what they did was they introduced the Nuremberg Laws from that. So they studied all of that and they introduced the Nuremberg Laws. So I don't think it's by accident that we're seeing, and we have seen on other Democratic Party platforms, very similar slogans, talking points, campaign arguments, happening over and over and over again with these candidates. Now, I'm going to explain this in a way that we can kind of condense it because I need to get into the dream about Jonathan Kahn, which ties to 2024. So, hundred years separated the Paris France Olympics and Lenin dying in 1924 from 2024 hundred year cycle that something is going to happen to high ranking leadership in Russia because it's a hundred year cycle. I would go as far as to say that right now, but there's something else that was a hundred year cycle. Jonah and Nahum, the book of Jonah, Jonah comes to Nineveh. Nineveh has a full eclipse, a full solar eclipse, days before Jonah shows up. He comes to Nineveh. He pronounces judgment on Nineveh, speaking about seven words or so. Forty days, and they would be judged. The city would be overthrown. Nineveh was the hub of the worship of the false goddess Ishtar, or also known as Ashtoreth. Nineveh humbles themselves, repents, and turns the entire nation. What happens a hundred years later is that Nineveh is worse than it was. And now the prophet Nahum prophesies total destruction to come upon Nineveh. That that, that, that that is what the Lord had set and intended to do. And that total destruction was going to come upon Nineveh because they had been given a hundred years to turn their act around. They have been given 100 years to stop with the, the idolatry. And now Nahum comes in 100 years after Jonah and pronounces the judgment upon Nineveh that actually would happen. So God's hand would not be stayed with that that time around. So we see what happened this past year. We see the eclipse that happened. We see that it passed over more than eight cities named Nineveh. We see the tie to the book of Jonah, right? And then you've got the tie to the 100-year cycle because in 1924, you had the Olympics in Paris, France, and Lenin died. And now we're in 2024, 100 years later, and the Olympics in Paris, France had a blasphemous Last Supper mocking Christianity and Almighty God himself. And God will not be mocked. I will tell you that much. God will not be mocked. They did that. And... On top of it, Russia is in a horrible war right now. And the leadership of Russia, I believe, is on shaky ground based on this 100-year cycle. And so it all sort of ties together. 
So I wanted to go over that with you briefly. I am going to read from the book of Nahum uh, in a bit, but I wanted to go over that with you briefly, how this all connects. So this is why it's no mistake in a hundred years later, when the Olympics are in Paris, France, mocking almighty God and his son, Jesus Christ, with a very blasphemous past, uh, last supper, you see a candidate arise in this nation that talks about bringing back the joy and peace, bread, and land, and how they're going to help you with all of that, that is no accident. So, saying that, because this ties into it, let's go into the dream. Let's go into the dream. So, this was August 18th, 2024, is when I had this dream. So, it was a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago or so. And this was the dream. Myself and Jonathan Kahn, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, were in an arena filled with people. We were speaking. Jonathan spoke first. Then I spoke. And I mentioned 1924. And I also mentioned a stock market crash. And I said, it's going to be like that. I was speaking to a crowd. This was written on my in my notes. So I had notes in my hand that were handwritten. The arena we were in must have had about 10,000 people in it, all worshiping and crying out to the Lord. And Jonathan was crying out to the Lord. He spoke and then he was crying out to the Lord. And as I'm speaking, he's crying out to the Lord with the people in the arena. And I mentioned the year 1924 in the dream and a stock market crash. And I said, it's going to be like that. So Interestingly enough, let me explain to you now everything that happened in 1924, because we know about the Olympics and we know about Lenin dying, but I'm going to explain to you everything else that happened in 1924, because this is a hundred years this year. So me having this dream back in August with everything that's transpiring, I don't think is an accident. So 1924 was the year that Adolf Hitler was sentenced to prison for his involvement in the failed coup by the Nazi party, Lenin, the dictator of the Soviet Union, died. J. Edgar Hoover was appointed head of the FBI. It was also the year that the United States introduced immigration laws. Isn't that interesting? It was the year the U.S. introduced immigration laws. And then there was a, uh, a, a landslide victory in Britain and England, some on the scene in the middle of what's happening with Israel. What they did in 1924 is the Turkish National Assembly abolishes the caliphate that had been claimed by sultans of the Ottoman Empire for more than four centuries. So they abolished the caliphate, okay, in 1924. Um, the trial against Hitler for treason happened. Let's see. Yep, in, in Beer Hall Putsch in Munich, United States. Isn't that interesting? So that happened in 1924. China formally recognizes the USSR, which is interesting because China and Russia have gotten very cozy lately, cozier than normal. So in 1924, China formally recognizes the USSR. Let's see what else. 1924, a Hindu Muslim. This is really interesting. A Hindu Muslim rebellion takes place in India. Do you know what's happening in the year 2024 in India right now? The Hindus and Muslims are at war with each other, killing each other. Muslims are trying to kill Hindus right now actively in India. There is somebody over in India that lives there that has been telling me what's going on. So in 1924, there was a Hindu Muslim rebellion that takes place in India. In 2024, you've got the Muslims warring with the Hindus and trying to kill the Hindus right now in India. Uh, also in 1924, August 29th, 1924, Germany's Reichstag approves the Dawes Plan, which sought to solve the problems of World War I reparations. Okay, so that happened. Civil war breaks out in China. So this is what I would say, that China is teetering on the brink of an uprising. That's what I would say, given this cycle. Now, this is interesting, too. 1924, an assassination attempt on Mussolini fails. So there was an assassin, a failed assassination attempt against a dictator, Mussolini. This is interesting in 1924. The Washington Senators win the World Series. Now, I found that interesting because of the name Washington Senators. France and Russia sign a trade agreement in 1924. 
So that's another, that is another combination to watch, France and Russia. The two of them uh, making nice with each other uh, and doing these types of agreements together. A stage coup in Estonia by communists fails. So there was a coup that was staged in Estonia in 1924. It was staged by communists that Hitler is freed from jail early. He served only nine months of a five-year sentence. Uh, Also in 1924, the dictator Mussolini orders the suppression of opposition newspapers. So this all happens in 1924, just to give you some perspective from this dream. Also, in the dream, I talked about 1924 and a stock market crash. I talked about those two things. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about this. So the prosperity of the 1920s also fostered new social norms and financial innovations. Okay. Um, There was a a lot of investment in the stock market, market, which ultimately led to an economic collapse and the onset of the Great Depression in 1929. After dropping by more than 32% in 1920, the Dow Jones Industrial Average jumped from a value uh, of 63.9 points in August of 1921 to a high of more than 381 points before the market crashed in October of 1929. So basically, they started letting people buy stocks on margin where you don't have to pay for the full price of the stock. And that was one of the reasons the crash happened. So they started allowing people to buy on margins. 1924, though, is interesting. In the year 1924, the recession ended in July. Now, why is this so important? Because we're in 2024 and in July is when they attempted to assassinate President Trump. So in 1924, the recession ends in July. The nation was in a recession. The end of that recession started in July. In 2024, in July, 100 years later, they attempted to assassinate President Trump. I don't think that's a coincidence. It was the year... Well, let's put it this way. 1924 was a Shemitah year. It was actually the year 5684. 1924 happened to be a Shemitah year. Now, many very serious events. Now, I've read to you some of them that happened that year are known to happen on Shemitah years. Uh, Nation-altering events. The world banking crisis of 2008 happened on a Shemitah year. It also happened to be when Barack Obama was running for office. Four happened to be a Shemitah year, and it happened to be a year where a recession ended in July, and it happened to be a year where you had assassination attempts of world leaders. You had coups that were staged. Uh, you had the passing away of the leader of the USSR. So very interesting stuff. Now, when you go back to what I had spoken about prior in the book of Jonah and Nahum, because they're part of this hundred year cycle also, because of what happened this year with the eclipse, because it passed over more than eight cities named Nineveh, I spoke about the hundred years that separated Jonah prophesying against Nineveh and Nineveh repenting and Nineveh prophesying the destruction of Nineveh and them actually being destroyed. So in Nahum chapter two, and then we're going to get into the Mad Hatter dream. So Nahum chapter two says this, I'm going to read to you all of chapter two. It's only 13 verses. And this is what it says. The one who scatters has come up against you, Nineveh, man, the fortress and ramparts, watch the road. Strengthen your back, prepare for battle, summon all your strength. For the Lord will restore the splendor and majesty of Jacob, like the splendor of Israel. And they said ancient and united, which is interesting. Even though destroyers have destroyed them and ruined their vine branches, the shields of his soldiers of Media and Babylon, the soldiers of Media, M-E-D-I-A, The shield of his soldiers of Media and Babylon are colored red. The warriors are dressed in scarlet. The chariots blaze with fire of steel. 
when he is prepared to march and the cypress spears are brandished for battle. The chariots race madly in the streets. They rush wildly in the broad plazas. Their appearance is like torches. They rush in various directions like forked lightning. He remembers and summons his nobles. They stumble in their march. They hurry to the city wall and the mantelet is prepared and firmly set up. The gates of the rivers surrounding Nineveh are opened and the palace is dissolved. It is decreed. Nineveh is stripped and she is carried away. And her handmaids are moaning like the sound of doves beating on their breasts. Though Nineveh was like a pool of water through her days, now her inhabitants are fleeing. Stop, stop, but no one turns back. Plunder the silver, plunder the gold, for there is no end to the treasure. Wealth from every precious object. She is emptied. She is desolate and waste. Hearts melting in fear and knees knocking. Anguish is in the whole body and the faces of all grow pale. Where is the den of the lions, which is Assyria, and the feeding place of the young lions? Where's the lion, lioness, and lion's cub proud? Oh, they're saying, where the lion, lioness, and lion's cub proud with nothing to fear? The lion of Assyria tore enough for his cubs, killed enough prey for his lionesses, and filled his lairs with prey and his dens with torn flesh. 13, behold, I am against you, Nineveh, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will burn your chariots in the smoke, and the sword will devour your young lions. I will cut off your prey from the land, and the voice of your messengers will no longer be heard. That is Nineveh chapter 2. And this is after Nineveh had a hundred years to repent. A hundred years, and they didn't. And destruction came upon Nineveh, and everything the Lord had said, he meant it. So when this eclipse happened in 2024, and passed over more than eight cities named Nineveh, it was a warning to the United States of America. It was a warning to get in line and to repent and to humble ourselves before Almighty God. Because when Nineveh did that, it was spared the first time. When Nineveh refused to do that the second time, it was destroyed. And that is something to keep in mind because these cycles are important. And there's, first of all, reasons I have these type of dreams. And secondly, what marked 1924, we are watching mark 2024. So we need to pay attention. And we need to pay attention then to what happened in 1924 to make sure that some of this stuff doesn't repeat itself in 2024. Okay. So I'm getting up the second dream. Because going through all that verse, this is going to make a lot more sense to you. Okay, hold on a second. So this dream happened August 22nd, 2024. This, this is Tim Walsh's extended family all lining up for a wonderful family photo, all showing their support uh, of Donald Trump, which I find interesting. So just a little tidbit there. So I don't, I have never dreamt about Tim Waltz. I don't know if I'll ever dream about him again. But when so, when I have a dream like this where I don't normally dream about somebody, it's something I have to pay attention to. So in this dream, I'm at a birthday party in the dream. And Tim Waltz is there. However, he looks like the Mad Hatter in the dream. So he had these fake huge eyes. He had this black spiky hair sticking out from what appeared to be a very large top hat and he took the costume on and off you see that's important so i'd watch him take the costume off and put it back on and take the costume off and put it back on and so for some reason and i don't understand this but i was going to enter in the dream i guess i was going to interview him on ark of grace which i don't think would ever happen in real life but in the dream um I was supposed to, I guess, interview him. Now, when you're interviewing somebody, right, you're pressing them for answers. So that could be what that has to do with. But when you're interviewing someone, you're pressing them for answers. So this is this is the whole dream. It was very short um, and it was very to the point. 
So I started to do some digging once I had the stream. And if you want to see what I have a picture here of the Mad Hatter and kind of what he looked like for those of you who don't know what he looks like. All right, here it is. So here's a picture just for you to see that the spiky hair sticking out from under a big hat. That's exactly what I saw. So where the Mad Hatter comes from is Alice in Wonderland. And he hosted a tea party. And in the dream, it was an unbirthday party. I thought, well, in the scene where the Mad Hatter is, he's hosting an unbirthday party. In the dream I had, it was a birthday party. So he's hosting this unbirthday party uh, in the part of the account of Alice in Wonderland that he's in. And he was very eccentric and he was very odd. And where the term Mad Hatter comes from, it was widespread in Victorian society, given how popular hats were across all strands of society. Um, however, many hat companies began using mercury while curing pelts in the hat. So in the making of the, of the hat, they would put mercury, they would use mercury while curing the pelts in the hat and not realizing how harmful it was. And when wor mercury worked its way into the system of the hat makers, many of them suffered a series of physical and mental health conditions, including dementia. This is why I'm reading all this, leading to the rise of the expression, mad as a hatter. So in the dream, I'm seeing him as the Mad Hatter. And so when Carol wrote Alice in Wonderland, it was a critique of Victorian society. And they said it was a problematic time for mental health sufferers who were treated with little dignity or respect. Um, some critics have argued uh, that Carol explores how we might approach the mad or insane with greater empathy and understanding. Uh, by painting th this unstable character of the Mad Hatter as, a set, uh, as eccentric, but ultimately harmless. Now, the behavior was contradictory and unpredictable. So the, the Mad Hatter's behavior contradicted himself. His own behavior contradicted himself, and he was unpredictable. And of all the characters in the... It, 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 when Carol wrote Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter is one of the most confusing of all the characters because all he does is give unsolvable riddles um, and addresses her in a direct and often uncompromisingly rude manner. So he speaks in riddles, which are basically word salads, right? So he speaks in word salads. He addresses her in a very rude manner. He contradicts his own behavior. He is odd. He is eccentric. And this is all the qualities of who the Mad Hatter was. If you remember, too, he hosted a never-ending tea party that was supposed to be an unbirthday party. So this is something else that happened. And this is what I found fascinating. And I started to realize why maybe he was portrayed as this in the dream. Their tea party was never ending. It was eternal. And they were forever stuck at six o'clock, always on an unbirthday. So the Mad Hatter was always stuck at six o'clock and always on an unbirthday, which is the antithesis, right, of a birthday. So an unbirthday is every day. It's not your birthday. And it's constantly stuck on six o'clock. Now, a couple of other things, a couple of other things to, to note here. The Mad Hatter is often interpreted as a symbol of rebellion against societal norms. Isn't that interesting? He's often a symbol of rebellion against societal norms. His nonsensical behavior and disregard for rule challenge and disregard for rules challenges the strict social constructs of the time. Let me see what else I want to, I want to cover here. Okay. And they were convincing Alice 
that an unbirthday was just as important as a birthday. So they were taking something that was special. They were flipping it on its head and they were convincing you that an unbirthday is just as important as a regular birthday. This is the, the lunacy that was basically in the film. And you, they, they had a couple of interesting people sitting at the table with them. So the Mad Adder in the account has a March hair and has a dormouse. He has a March hair and a dormouse at this unbirthday party singing the unbirthday song. And so you've got the hair, you've got a March hair, right? Now, this is interesting. Hairs are more aggressive March to September. So hairs happen to be more aggressive March to September, right? I just find it interesting that Obama came back out in August, right? Between this March to September window, because that mating season for them is almost over. So hairs are more aggressive March to September when it's mating season. And very interestingly enough, you see Clinton and Obama and all of them come back out within this window. And then you've got, so you got the hair there, and then you've got the dormouse that sat between the March hair and the Mad Hatter. And they were using him as a cushion while he slept. So the dormouse was literally being used as a cushion in the account. And he woke up every so often. But what happens? He remains asleep. All those people out there who are asleep right now. So the dormouse is completely asleep and he only wakes up every now and then. And then he decides he wants to go back to sleep. And he pays no attention to the lunacy and the madness and the confusion and the contradictory behavior that is going on uh, in this account. Also to note the Tea Party, right? We look at it in politics is a grassroots movement. Uh, also the Boston Tea Party, no taxation without representation. Uh, the rebellion against societal norms, wokeism. What I found most interesting about this, so when I went to go study this and look at this after I had the stream, they said they were forever stuck at six o'clock. Six is the number of man, biblically speaking. They are stuck in man. They are stuck in the flesh. They are continually stuck in the flesh because they have gone mad and they are contradicting their own behavior and they are sowing confusion and they are putting people to sleep purposely. Now it's forever stuck at six o'clock. If you remember, it was six 11 when they attempted to assassinate president Trump in Pennsylvania. It was six 11. Also forever stuck at six o'clock. It was the sixth hour in the gospel of Luke that darkness comes over the land. And it's in Luke 23, 44 through 45. And it says it was about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. Because the sun was obscured and the veil of the Holy of Holies of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. That was right before deliverance. So darkness comes before deliverance. Before deliverance, there is an advance of darkness. And in Luke 23, it was the sixth hour that darkness came over the land and they were forever stuck at six o'clock, the Mad Hatter and the Dormouse and the March Hare. Now it's interesting, it was a March Hare because the first indictment against Donald Trump came down in the month of March. In the month of March, 2023, there was attack on the school in Nashville uh, named Covenant because the covenant of the nation was about to completely go under a full-blown attack. So I think... This is the reason I saw him as the Mad Hatter in, and also on top of that, the Hatters of that day went mad because they were working with things that were causing people to get sick. They were toying with mercury. They were toying with toxic things that were causing them to get sick. It was causing the disease of the mind. 
It was causing their mind to go crazy. They were tampering with things they didn't understand. They were ingesting what they shouldn't. They were uh, toying with what they never should have been touching. And it caused them to go mad. Thus, the Mad Hatter. And at this birthday party in the dream, Tim Waltz is dressed as the Mad Hatter and he's taking the costume on and off at will. So what does that tell you? Well, the word of God says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And that costume was coming on and off. And so between that dream and the dream with Jonathan Kahn, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, and the 100-year cycle, and us also being within this 40-day period uh, before the beginning of the uh, year 5785 and Yom Kippur, the holiest day on the Jewish calendar, I think this is where God's people and the nation truly have to cry out to him right now. In in all honesty, in all sincerity, in 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 all humility, because you have people that are purposely who are mad, who are who are contradicting their behavior, who are acting in a confusing manner who are tampering with things that they shouldn't be, and they're making it look like a party. You see, it was a birthday party, but Tim Waltz was there, so really that represented the Democratic Party. You see, it was a party. So in the dream, it represented the fact that the Democratic Party has become, indeed, just like the Mad Hatter, trying to convince you that unbirthdays are real things to be celebrated. Always stuck at six o'clock because they're always in the flesh. I mean, they had abortion trucks outside the DNC for Pete's sake. Why? Because flesh, because of flesh, because of the shedding of innocent blood. It's a party that is mad, that has completely gone mad, that contradicts everything they say, that completely acts in rebellion against societal norms that is forever stuck at six o'clock because six is the number of man. Let he who has wisdom calculate for it is the number of a man and his number is six, six, six. So Seeing it in this context and then understanding, too, that in that scene that Carol wrote, you had the March hair and hairs are known to be aggressive between certain times. And it was Mar in March 2023 that the indictment against Trump came down and the dormouse who's always asleep and is what were they doing? They were leaning on him. They were using him as a prop. They were using him as a pillow to prop themselves up. They're using the sleeping public. The Democratic Party is to prop themselves up at a party where they're convincing everybody that things are real that don't exist. And the Dormouse woke up every now and then, said a couple of things and went right back to sleep and they continued using him as a prop. That is what the Democratic Party is doing. That is what they're doing. They're using the public they have put to sleep as a prop. And they're using them at props while they have a party that has everything to do with madness, rebellion, and contradictory behavior. Whatever they say, their actions contradict it. Peace bred land. They have no intention of bringing peace to this nation. They have no intention of giving you bread. Because our bread should come from the Lord and the word of God. Give us this day our daily bread. They have no intention of doing that. But that's the enemy refabricating something again. And using it for wicked exploits. Peace bread and land. And we're going to give you your land back. And we're going to secure the borders. And we're going to protect it. 
and they say it and it's madness because they have no intention of doing it. And that is why he was the Mad Hatter. We're going to destroy your peace. We are going to make sure there are shortages across the nation so you can't get bread. And we're going to rip the land away from you, your freedoms, the Constitution, and destroy the covenant. That is what their real intention is. But they're contradicting it. They are contradicting it. And they are acting just like the Mad Hatter. Just like the Mad Hatter. And on top of it, it's the 100-year cycle. This is a 100-year cycle. So 2024 is crucial, given what happened in 1924. Given also the time between Jonah prophesying against Nineveh and Nahum prophesying and the total destruction of Nineveh coming. 2024, this is why it's the Valley of Decision Year for the United States of America. Because Alice bought in to the unbirthday party. She bought right into it, didn't question it didn't question the madness of it. She bought right into it. And it ultimately hurt her. Oh, we're just going to celebrate you. Doesn't that sound familiar? That's what happened at that unbirthday party. We're just going to celebrate you. You and how eccentric and mad and crazy you are. We're just going to celebrate you. Who does that sound like to you? With the rainbow and transgenderism and gay rights and kids running around with freaking tails and freaking furries on their heads thinking they're animals. We're just going to celebrate you. In all your oddness, in all your brokenness, because it's your unbirthday. Don't look at all the madness going on around you. And that's what the Mad Hatter tried to do. Don't look at all this madness going on around you. Oh, let's celebrate. Forget all the dysfunction and madness that you see happening. Forget it. Let's just celebrate you. And that leads to a demise of a nation. And that leads to the demise of a person because there is zero accountability. It is all sugar, no substance. That's what it is. And this is why I had this dream. I believe the way that the Lord had me see it. Because right now, the Democratic Party and the Republicans who have bought out to it are trying to invite you to an unbirthday party. You need to RSVP no to that invitation. And take your land back and proclaim your faith in God openly. You need to RSVP no to that because they're really trying to invite you right now to an unbirthday party that is filled with joy. The Mad Hatter, as crazy as he sounded, what did he exuberate? Joy. He's running around exuberating joy while he sounds ridiculous. And he sounds crazy because he is. But that's what they're trying to invite you to and your children. They are trying to pull a seat up at the table for your children at this unbirthday party of the Democratic Party that is forever stuck at six o'clock because it's the number of man and it's the flesh. And the flesh is at enmity with God. And the Democratic Party has put itself at enmity with God in direct opposition to God. And since they want to destroy the flesh and so that, that they shall reap because you need to wake up to the madness of the unbirthday party of the democratic party and the madness of the mad hatter that they have put at the helm, helping lead this unbirthday party with an aggressive hair and a sleeping mouse. It's madness. It's fantasy. It's an illusion that they have created to try to keep the public asleep so they can continue being at six o'clock and keep their party going. And this is exactly what is happening. And we, as God's children, have been given authority through Christ Jesus to go before his throne and to ask for judgment against these spirits 
that are giving this party power and that are giving those in the Republican Party power who have decided to hold hands in the dark with them. We can do that. And there is a solution for this in Second Chronicles chapter 7. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land, says the Lord. That is what the people of God need to be doing because the fear of God is going to hit the nation. The fear of the Lord is going to come and descend on the nation. And this 40-day window we're in right now is crucial. And that's interesting because it was 40 days that Jonah pronounced judgment until Nineveh would be destroyed. And then 100 years later, Nahum pronounces it and it is destroyed. This is a serious window. There is a speed bump on the front. There is a speed bump on the front. Oh, just say, oh. 